Hey everyone, it's Calvin, also known as Romer, and this is Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations, and this is my first ever playthrough of Trials and Tribulations. We are back at court, about to defend someone who I personally believe is very innocent, but we're gonna have to see how things go. My theories do change as time goes on throughout these trials, as they should. October 13, 9.36 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 4. Hey Nick! Uh, what is it? Is something wrong? Nah, but did you see all the people here? It's crazy. Oh, so check out the Master Mask Glossy I bought. So you bought like an 8x10 or something? You bought this? Where? From the little tents in front of all the of the courthouse. They have all sorts of things for sale. So there's a big fandom outside, I suppose, as well. And like, I suppose that would happen. I, I Like in many places in the world, people do worship people like that. I, 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 like I feel like at some points in history that has happened many times. Uh, you know, I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. Mass to mass publicity photos stuck uh, stuck into the uh, court record. Come on, I'm guilty. Show the book at me. Who's screaming like that? Oh, oh my poor boy. Ron, we'll get you off, don't worry. Oh, Mr. Wright, you made it. Yeah, I did. But it doesn't look like things are going to get any less ugly for you. Because I did it. I'm the criminal. Me. Me. Ah. <sighs> He's at it again. I sent the calling card to Lordly Taylor. I admit it. But you don't have the sacred urn, right? Well, that's true, but that doesn't mean that I didn't commit the crime. Normally when I say, of course you didn't, I'm being sarcastic, but you? Yikes. Anyway, I admit that I'm guilty. So make sure to give me a guilty verdict. Please, I'm not doing that, buddy. Ron, Ron, I'm not doing it. Oh, there you are, Ronnie. Bonjour, sweetie. Oh, Desi. Honey. Bonjour. Well, actually, I don't really know why I should be speaking French to you at a time like this. Leave it all to me, Ronnie. I swear, I'll protect you. Um, uh, well, you see, actually, the thief is, uh, me. Can I tell you something, Nicky boy? I can guarantee that my Ronnie is innocent. If he's declared guilty... I'll be ever so cross with you. Oh my god. <laughs> There's something so terrifying about someone that like will be like, man, I'm just telling you, I'll be pissed off. And then the smile just like tattooed on their face. So why are you smiling when you say, yeah, it's terrifying. Well, if you excuse me, I've got some errands I need to take care of. I'm counting on you, Nikki boy. Good luck. Well then. Uh, to be honest, I really don't know whether Ron is masked to mask or not. But there's only one thing I am sure of. He doesn't have the sacred urn right now. Uh, Mr. Delete, it's time for you to enter the courtroom. For the time being, I guess I'll have to trust Desiree. I think it's like, that. that's my, that's my personal thought process as well. I'm gonna trust her and her, like what she says when I, because that's the only way we're gonna progress forward, right? Like if we progress with just he's guilty, then the case ends. You know what I mean? But, like, if we progress thinking, like, we'll find out whether he's guilty or not, then we get to keep going forward and actually doing stuff, and that works out way better. October 13, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number six. Oh, here's your man. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Ron Delete. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Oh, my God, it's... This is our first time, like, in this game, defending someone as Phoenix. Look at this guy. The freaking, like, visor, like, headpiece with the white hair. It's a cool suit, though. It's actually a very fashionable suit. What about the prosecution? Are you prepared to... What a stupid question. The... What did you say? Fine. Let me ask you then, Your Honor. Are you ready? Are you ready to pass judgment? No, no, I, I'm not. I will pass judgment after I hear the arguments from both sides. Well, if you're not ready yourself, you shouldn't expect others to be. That's a rule to live by. Um, who are you? I am Godot, legendary prosecutor. I've never lost a case. Ah, uh, he's that one Detective Adamy was talking about. Uh, yes, your reputation. What is, is this? His theme song? So he's definitely more like uh, like a cross between like I don't know like for, for, I'm getting very noir vibes 
from this guy. Your reputation precedes you. What kind of cases have you dealt with so far? Ha, huh. none. What did you say? I've never prosecuted a case before. N never But you said you've never lost before. Exactly. I've never lost. I've never won before either. Wait, wh what? What are you saying, Godot? Quite arrogant for a beginner, aren't you? Even though the mightiest of redwoods begin their lives as mere saplings. But, but, a mask in a court of law? Ha! <laughs> Don't you know anything? No matter the man, we all wear masks. Ooh. Either on our faces or over our hearts. This guy is the real deal, all right, Nick. <laughs> Why does it seem like all prosecutors are the real deal? True. Very true. So we might if we finally meet, Mr. Phoenix Trite. That's not my name. Get it right. Get it right again. Try it again. We're not moving forward to you. Try it again. Okay, we're moving forward. Nick, is he a friend of yours? No. I don't have any friends that call me Trite. Just who is this masked man? I've returned from the depths of hell to do battle with you. Uh, well then, uh, uh, Prosecutor Gobo. It's not Gobo, it's Gudo, Your Honor. In, in any case, please give your opening statement. Opening statement? Those things are not fit for even dogs to consume. I have only one thing to say before we start. To you, Mr. Trite? What is it? Are you familiar with the saying, a chain is only as strong as the weakest- I am. It's only as strong as the weakest link. I am very, very familiar with that. I wonder how much you can withstand before you and your case break in two. I, I don't know. <laughs> You're very convincing. <laughs> but I, I don't know. <laughs> Hmm, well then, let's hear from the first witness. Oh, it's Gumshoe, great. This is starting off great. Uh, my name is... No one has asked for your name, witness. Uh... The important thing is what you know, that's all. Start talking. We're listening. Uh... Yes, yes, sir. Alright, witness, first let's hear about... What you know about the thief that stole the urn? Uh, yes, sir. So we're starting off a gumshoe, which is the thing. It makes sense. We do start off a gumshoe quite a bit. Uh, but even if we're starting off a gumshoe, uh, like I, I, I gotta be, I gotta be honest. I gotta be honest. Like gumshoe can, like gumshoe can literally make this case go like completely right for us on rare occasions. But usually he like sends our own uh, defendant down the freaking river. Master Mask is the master thief that first started his crime spree six months ago. He's so confident that he spends his, sends his calling card before he even commits the crime. This is his fifth heist, and as usual, he sent a card on to Lord the Tailor. His pattern is to always go after the most, uh, only the most precious art pieces. That's why we're sure it was Master Master. It fits his MO to a T. Well, we know for a fact, first of all, that the urn is not a treasured art piece. We know it's not valuable, and we know that, like, uh, Adrian told us that she couldn't sell it for anything. You know what I mean? We know this for a fact. And he stole that art piece. Right? So, like, we know that. So, then, the actual identity of this master mask is... Mr. Goodo, what are you... Did he, did he slam the table? Oh, God, that is slick. <laughs> <laughs> How did you do that with your coffee? <laughs> We're in the middle of a trial here, Mr. Godot. Blacker than the moonless night, hotter and more bitter than hell itself. That is coffee. I'm sure you can grant me at least this much, Your Honor. Oh, please, proceed. Very well. It's only coffee after all. <laughs> this you would let you would literally let a full-on brawl go in your courtroom. If, like, the girl smiled at ya. Like, don't even lie, dude. Don't even lie. What? You can't be letting him slide this early in the trial. Yeah, Phoenix, we got- we're uh, uphill battle already. Proceed with your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Well, Nick, what are you going to do? I know exactly what we're going to talk about first. As long as they haven't brought up Mr. Delete's identity. All we can do is show that it wasn't Master Master stole the urn. Great illustration of my there, by the way. Uh, but yeah, there's one- 
thing that he said here that right away I'm like, yeah, this is not happening. And I want to I want to present something right away. I know we should be pressing a bit more. It's this. And that is because we know for a fact that Adrian told us that it's not valuable. No monetary value as well. It says it right here. There we go. Can I ask you a little something, Detective Gumshoe? Oh, uh, just you and the little in that question is making me nervous. You said that he always goes after the most precious art pieces, right? Oh, uh, that's right, pal. But there's one problem. That's not what he did in this case. The supposedly priceless urn doesn't exactly rise to the level of precious art. Uh, what do you mean? Nick, how can you say such a terrible thing? Mike, please don't hurt me. This is all for the greater good. We're talking about not emotional value or like uh, uh, spiritual value. We're talking about like monetary value, okay? No, no, I meant from a fi yeah, from a financial point of view. I mean it. It would. I mean it would. It fetch a good price. Well, Prosecutor Godot, what is the value of that urn? <laughs> the appraisers I spoke to said they couldn't attach a price to it, and I mean that in the worst sense. So in other words, it was not the kind of item that Master Mass would normally go after. Oh! What about that, Gumshoe? Arrest Gumshoe. No, don't do that. If I understand you correctly, Mr. Wright, you're saying that the theft of the sacred urn was not the work of Master Mask. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Actually, all I did was point out the contradiction. The argument was made itself, but... Well, first of all, we need to get this issue cleared up. Wait a second, but would that not, like... If we're saying that our client is a... Our defendant is a copycat of Master Mask and is like actually just a fan. Like, could that incriminate him more? Because then it'd be like, if it's not Master Mask and we don't think he's Master Mask, then it's a little bit different, right? Was this last robbery the work of Master Mask or not? What do you have to say about this, Mr. Godot? That jawline, though, what the hell? Where'd you get that? Did you order that? Where'd you get that? Uh, this coffee here. It's my own special blend. I call it Godot number 107. I'm trying to decide whether to cut down on the acidity or the bitterness. That's the only thing I've got on my mind right now. Mr. Trite. Uh, what? If you're really a man, you should clean up your own mess. Um, sorry, but I don't get what you mean. If you're saying it wasn't Master Mass that stole the urn, then it must be someone in, in, imitating Master Mass methods. A fake. A fake Master Mask? Fake Master Mask? That sounds so ridiculous, but I like it. Now, before I decide on my coffee, I believe some proof is in order, Mr. Trite. Again, the sprites showing off like some of the best personality moments in this game. Like they do with such a limited, like, limited animations, but it works so well. Proof that the person who appeared at Lordy Taylor that night was actually a fake. Hmm, though I don't approve of Mr. Godot's behavior, his point is valid. Mr. Wright, we're waiting. You're waiting? Uh, well, like, how am I supposed to know? <laughs> it looks like I have to prove it. I need proof that the person Lordy Taylor and I was in fact the fake Master Mask. Do we have something like that? That's a striking pose. We have the yeah, we have the camera f footage. Yeah, he's stealing urn. He's stealing urn in this photo, right? 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 The proof is right here. This looks like a photo taken by a security camera. But if you look closely, you'll notice something peculiar about it. <laughs> well then, why don't you go ahead and show us what it is? Wait, did I get it wrong? Go on, use the pointer to show us just what about this picture is so peculiar. Wait, I thought it was just because of the box. Hold on a second. Wait. Wait a second, no. Is it the box? It's right here, I think. Is that what's so peculiar? Haha, <laughs> the place you're pointing to is all wrong. Uh, what do you mean? The only thing peculiar in this courtroom is on top of your head. Nick, are you going to let- wait, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. If we're looking at something, then it'll be other, his other photo here. What's- what's different then? Wait, the- the freaking the frickin' tingamajigger. Is that what they mean? The collar. 
the collar around with the with the, with the, the pin on his collar. Is that it? Nick, are you gonna let him get away making fun of your hair? Yes, at least until I know he can't use his goggles to fry me or something. <laughs> well, anyway, the strange spot in, there is a strange spot in this photo. <laughs> Still haven't given up. So what is it then? Go on, use this pointer and show us this, what uh, what about this picture so peculiar? So yeah, like um, I I thought it was just gonna be the box because I thought that that's what was peculiar about it, but I guess it's this. It's right. Okay, good. It's right here, of course. You mean Master Mask? I have your piece of reference. Uh, I would like to, the court to take a look at. Is that the publicity photo I bought this morning? Yeah, it's very different. It's very different. But I said there was a difference between the one we saw before as well. It felt like it was a bit smaller too. The problem I have with the security camera photo is the brooch on the mask's chest. A, a brooch? Here, bailiff, get my steed. We need to retreat at once. Judge, get. Oh my god. <laughs> a brooch, your honor. It's a sort of clasp for holding one's cape on. A clasp, eh? Ah, uh, I see now. But Master Mask is a security camera photo. Oh, he has no brooch. The brooch is the same as the emblem on the, the Master's calling card and serves as his symbol. But the thief that broke into Lordly Taylor wasn't wearing a brooch. In other words, this Master Mask is a fake. I've been fooled again. It's okay. It's okay. Actually, no, it's not okay. You're an officer of the law. Okay, I, I can only I can only go through so many games just being like it's all right, but it's still okay, Gumshoe. It's true, undeniably true. Detective Gumshoe, how could you have overlooked this? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I don't know how I. Uh, uh oh, uh oh, big uh ohs. Hey now, if you're gonna have a pity party, invite me too. Mr. Godot, you you deserve some blame in this too. How could you have overlooked such a large brooch? <laughs> the brooch you're talking about? Do you mean this? Oh. That's Master Master's brooch. Where did you find it? Well, I've always had a good nose for evidence. I got it at the crime scene. It was hidden in the shadow of a big female Buddha statue. Buddha statue? Oh, he must mean Amy Faye's statue. What are you telling me about that, sir? I always put evidence away in my pocket. After all, it's the safest place for crucial evidence. This guy's one cool customer. Shouldn't he have to, like, show that before the case starts? Like, I guess we didn't, like, we didn't add the promotional photo, but this is something that is literally off the criminal's, like, outfit, right? It's the to be shaken up, isn't it, little lady? That friend of yours left pretty little hickeys on there, too. H yeah, hickeys? Figuratively speaking, of course. I'm referring to Rondelite's fingerprints. Uh, what? what? The defendant's fingerprints are on the brooch? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Godot, let's see that brooch. I've grown attached to my metallic girlfriend here. Take good care of her. Hmm, she, I mean, it appears to have been torn off uh, some clothing. There's a little bit of cloth left on the back. Obviously, there must have been a big struggle that night at the crime scene. Uh oh, Phoenix, we have a problem. Yeah, Master Master's brooch found in the shadow of Amy Faye's statue. Looks like it was torn off uh, some clothing. <laughs> you mess with Godot? By the way, uh, totally realized, like, in between episodes that the box itself that had the urn was what was stuck into the paint. Uh, totally realized that in, in previous episodes. I know someone's probably commented that. Uh, I totally realized as I was editing it that it was the box, uh, that had the paint stuck on it, by the way. And you get burned. Uh, he's been playing me like a violin! Well, Judge, I'm about ready to call my next witness. Uh, already? Oh, you done with me? But I haven't proved anything yet. You've proven your own incompetence. That's good enough. Uh, well, that doesn't sound good at all. B Bailiff, uh, bring the next witness to the courtroom. Finally, time for the ace detective to make his appearance. Huh? Oh no. I don't like, I don't think this is gonna go as well as you think it will. One second is one drip of coffee pot. 
let's hurry it up. Shh, silence! <laughs> now I see, it's all becoming clear. Uh, what's clear? Zavari. The truth has once again been elegantly revealed to me. What we have here is a judge and a prosecutor and a coffee maniac at that. Am I correct? Well, yes, that's right. <laughs> not bad, not bad. What do you mean? You've been talking nothing. Well, you've been talking about coffee this whole... Of course he knows that. You're the first person that's ever been able to pe penetrate my secret veil. Well, uh, sir prosecutor, let me introduce myself. My name is Luke Atme, ace detective and rising star, illuminating the heavens. Boy, these two make a perfect pair. They either be best friends or they tear each other's head off. I think that he's playing the Luke at me a bit. I think he wants him to feel like he's on his side. Like he's trying to make out that he's like, he, he is re a really good detective. So like he'll give him more information or help him out a bit more maybe. But I will say that like so far, Godot has been like actually a very good, like even though he's like very disrespectful in the courtroom, like it's kind of refreshing to have like a guy who's like so far, just like instantly good at their, their job and like straight away just like, getting rid of the witness they don't need anymore, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of refreshing in a way. I've heard that on the night of the crime you were all alone on security detail. You have heard correctly. My specialty made monocle is worth more than a hundred Detective Gumshoes. If Detective Gumshoe was worth anything, that is. Hmm. Why was this guy all by himself anyway? There must be some, uh, there must be some reason I'm sure of it. That gavel. Well then, tell us what the special monocle of yours witnessed. This is gonna be difficult, because this guy sometimes speaks in, like, weird phrases, so... It was approximately one o'clock in the morning, just after that date changed. That's when my nemesis, the infamous Master Mass, dancingly descended upon me. Just as I began the turn, the coward struck a fierce blow on my noble head. We know this is true for sure. Great illustration, too. Darkness swallowed me before I could land a single strike. When I awoke, he was gone. 30 minutes later, I used an emergency photo to notify the police. So you didn't get a clear look at the criminal? My speciality made monocle never misses a thing. However, that is limited to things that fall within my own visual range. But of course, that's only natural. I fail to see why the witness seems so proud of his performance that evening. Well, so, Timer, let me explain. We are not speaking of any ordinary thief, but the king of the thieves, the great mask of mask, my arch enemy. That is why and what my instincts and my years of experience tell me. Mm, very well, proceed with the cross-examination, Mr. Wright. I have no idea what we can talk about here at this point, but we'll get through. I think we're gonna press a lot because the first one was pretty okay because it's like we knew about the urn. We'll see what we can do here. It was approximately one o'clock in the morning just after the day changed. I think we can, I don't think we need to press this. That's when my nemesis, the infamous Master Mass, dancingly descended upon me. Let's press it. Dancingly descended? From where exactly? Well, from the entrance, I suppose. Where else? So in actuality, he neither danced nor descended. Someone please save me. Um, so how is that you didn't notice a thief? My eyes were looking for the thief's shadow while my ears listened for his foot footfalls. But even so, the dastardly criminal managed to sneak up on me. I can only be due to, it can only be due to his subtly camouflaged cape and softly soled shoes. I hereby W Ace Dunce. Just as I began to turn, the coward struck a fierce blow on my noble head. We know this is true. Darkness swallowed me before I could land a single strike. When I woke, he was gone. I get like the only one like this this statement here isn't exactly wrong, right? We'll press it. I pressed that by accident, by the way, guys. I hit the... Apparently, the trigger buttons also are press buttons, and I knocked it off my knee. But we were going to press it anyway, so it's fine. Uh, attack and knocked you unconscious. You, you weren't able to do a thing? That's certainly some very impressive detective work. Hmm. Well, sir lawyer, have you ever been suddenly struck on the head? Huh? Well, actually, yes, by a fire extinguisher. And what happened? I was knocked out. And you lost your memory, too. Oh, yeah. You see? You have no right to look down on me, then, do you? The only reason I didn't lose my memory was because I have more brains to begin with. He may have brains, but 
the wiring to the self-reflection part seems to be severed. In any case, that was how I knock I was knocked senseless. And then 30 minutes later, I use the emergency phone to notify the police. Let's press this as well. Why not? Like, again, I don't really have much right now. Um, I'm going to look through the court record, and we're going to read everything kind of, like, very thoroughly to see if we can see anything that could be different. I don't know. About this 30 minutes. My silver cord was loosened, and my soul fled to the golden halls of Elysia. As usual, I have no idea what this guy is saying. I think he's saying that he was out cold. I love this illustration of Maya. She's just so dumb with this guy already. I love it. What happened during these 30 minutes? No one can say, Your Honor. That span of time has truly vanished into the ether. Just what is he going on about? There's something suspicious about Detective Adme. How could he not have noticed when the thief came in? Also, he says he was knocked unconscious before he could fight back. But that can't be right. It contradicts the evidence. Wait, that part contradicts the evidence? Which piece? The real question is, why would he tell such an obvious lie? Hold on a second, what what does he mean? Hold on, let's, let's, let's check something here. So let's go around here and see what we can present on this then. This part here, yeah. Let's see what we can present. So we have... Training badge, magnetama, treasure exhibit photo, statue... Oh, wrong one. I'm starting from the start here. So with the urn... No monetary value. We don't have this. No... Master Mask knocked Adam out during the crime with a blow to the back of the head. But this doesn't this doesn't say prove that he didn't fight back. This could actually prove that he couldn't fight back. Photo of a store of vengeance, take him with the camera, and that won't do. Ron's room. Wallet won't be anything. Yeah, I don't think the KB security thing either. Don't think that. So it's found in the shadow of Amy Face statue. Looks like it was torn off some clothing. Is that what they're talking about? Looks like it was torn off some clothing. Like Master Mask isn't just going to tear off the thing himself, right? So are they saying, is that what Phoenix was saying when he's saying that it contradicts the evidence of him, like, not being able to land a single blow? Because he probably did, there was a struggle then. Right? Right? No? I remember people saying that when the music stops, it can kind of signify that, like, something's going to happen. Mr. Atme, could you take a look at this with a special monocle of yours? Ah, this belongs to the criminal mastermind, my arch nemesis, Master Mask. It is, in point of fact, Master Mask's brooch. It was found on the floor of the basement warehouse. I wonder how that happened. <laughs> Elementary, my dear lawyer. Obviously, it wasn't glued on well enough. Not quite. It clearly showed signs of having been ripped off a piece of clothing. R ripped off? Ah. We can only deduce that the thief struggled with someone that night. That's the only thing I can think of. And there's only one person that was in the position to have a struggle with the thief. This is why I think it's not actually Master Mask as well, because why would this, like, great criminal thief who has gotten away from, like, so many, like, police officers and so many, like, uh, officials, why would he have to use a weapon just randomly sitting there to knock out someone, he would come prepared. Like, he'd have a baton or, like, maybe some sort of, like, even a pipe or something on him so he can knock people out or even, like, a tranquilizer. Like, a master thief who was, like, who was famous, like, wouldn't have to, like, pick up a weapon that's, like, right near him to, like, attack someone, right? He would have, like... Uh, like, he would have something in place that he would get away. Right? Not that, not that gumshoe is, like, hard to get away from. I'm just saying. And there's only one person that was in a position to have the struggle with the thief. That one only person, that, the only person that was on security duty that night. You, Detective Adamy. <sighs> Detective Adamy, you must have fought with the thief that night. So why did you lie in your testimony to the court? Witness, giving false testimony is a serious crime. Uh, I, no, uh, wait just a moment, Sir old timer. Don't talk to me like I'm living in a nursing home. <laughs> I just remembered, Your Honor. I was just confused because I've been dealing with so many cases lately. The true measure of a man is the amount of work he does. That's what I always say. Nick, you can only handle one case at a time, isn't that right? You, you talk too much. <laughs> poor, uh, poor, um, Maya. Wait, so you're saying that you and the thief fought? Hold on. That's quite enough, Your Honor. Excuse me. There's the coffee. Save the big questions for the testimony. 
That's one of my rules. Indeed, I understand. I, Luke Atomy, agree completely. So he's revising the testimony, okay. Indeed, it is true that I looked away from the door for a brief moment. You... You would not. You're... Why would you ever admit this? Like, that's not you. However, Luke at me cannot be so easily discombobulated. Well, that makes more sense, I suppose. You know? Unfortunately, the thief grabbed a weapon from the side and rendered me senseless. A true gentleman fights only with his own fists, but they were not enough. His first bow struck true. Bam! And that's all she wrote. So, in the end... Oh, sorry, so in the end... <laughs> me changing the voices. So, in the end, uh, you did catch a glimpse of Master Mask. Uh, correct. It was during his third crime that he struck me from behind. It seems that my memory has become a tad jumbled, so to speak. Mm, well, that's certainly understandable. I myself always get confused about which testimony goes on which, which case. That can't be good. What do we expect from this judge, Phoenix? Like, what do you expect at this point from this judge? Okay, here we go. So there's a few things that I, like, I, I think I'm, I'm gonna press everything I can right now. Indeed, it's true that I looked away from the door for a brief moment. I wanna press this because that doesn't sound like something you would say. So why did you look away from the door anyway? In addition to the camera, I repaired a variety of other sensors as well. The alarm was one of those. Had, uh, the, the alarm on one of those had gone off, so I had to check the data. That's why I went to the computer elegantly, of course. So we're more momentarily vulnerable when you're working on the computer. What should I do? Should I ask some more questions? Um. I'm gonna say that's enough this time, because I feel like, I feel like. That's go like we can get kind of like waste time going too far. Like I could ask him a question, but then again, I'm worried that it's just gonna like make us look like an idiot. Um, I guess we could ask about the sensor because I'm actually kind of curious, but like I don't know if it's gonna do anything. What kind of sensors are you talking about? There are other places in the basement that someone could have entered and exited from. There are air conditioners, duct, sewer pipes, and a cat door as well. I hooked up the heat detecting infrared and ultraviolet sensors to each of them. That's a lot of hardware. Was it all yours? This song is so good as well. Like again, like all the music in, in Ace Attorney, the Ace Attorney series just fits the vibe of the game so much. Like so, so much. And like it gets you in the mood, like for this court case. Lord the Taylor Department Store was kind of enough to provide the monitoring hardware. Naturally, the security camera that it took the photo belongs to them as well. In other words, he couldn't have rigged the equipment, huh? <laughs> Has that cleared up any doubts you had about me, Sir Lawyer? No, not really, but like, it, at least that question's okay. So I have a Luke Academy, cannot see me just completely. That sounds, yeah, that's okay. Unfortunately, you grabbed a weapon from the side and rendered me senseless. Uh, let's press this as well. What do you mean by weapon from the side? We know what weapon it is. I didn't want to ask that. I kind of wanted to see, like, you know, you know, I just wanted more information. I don't know. I don't want to. Maybe I got something wrong. Naturally, that thief had no idea what that I, Luke Atomy, was hiding in the area. He grabbed the saw from the statue and was standing by the door to the warehouse. Again, I don't think that Master Mass would do this. You mean the sword that was all twisted like a tree branch? Correct. Fortunately for me, the blade was not sharp. Okay, so he is talking about the she she So the thief armed himself with the sword. And what about yourself with this? A true gentleman fights only with his fists, but they were not enough. You had that much faith in your own fighting abilities? But of course, in college I was the second in charge of the boxing club. I'm sorry if I failed to find the that appropriately impressive. However, my opponent in the ring this time was my arch nemesis, Master Mask. This guy is a real piece of work. His first blow struck true, bam, and that's all she wrote. We know this isn't true though, right? We know now this isn't true because he grabbed the brooch, right? As he was trying to struggle. Can you tell us a little more, what, a little more about what happened? My opponent was both powerful and vicious. You might say he was powerish. Good one, Adamy, good one. 
powerishes. I assumed that the anime fighting stance, but a sudden flash of light blinded me. That, of course, was checkmate. My opponent had bested me. What do you do now? Should I ask more about this? So we leave it, you were blinded, or the anime fighting style. Um, I mean... We know he wasn't blinded, we know this, but what does he mean about his own fighting style? We're not gonna get punished for putting these... Apparently we're not gonna get punished for this, at least not in these earlier stages. What is this anime fighting style? I'm sorry, but that's a trade secret. I really can't say anymore. But... I suppose I could tell you if I absolutely must. The main thing is to put your back to the wall. That way, no one can get behind you. Wait a second, though. Wait a second. Blow to the back of the head. How? <laughs> if your back is against the wall, how? By the way, this fighting stance is, uh, yeah, it's a natural fighting style that, like, you should, like, a lot of people do, uh, like, employ because they, no one can come up from behind you and attack you. But if there's only one other person, like, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's alright. Or if there's, like, two people. But, like, if you're fighting, like, four people and you do this, they're just gonna beat you against the wall. <laughs> Like, that's what's gonna happen. You know what I mean? It's like, eventually, like, yeah, one or two people, that's fine. If you have, like, four people, you're they're using the wall now that you're gonna get hit against the wall. I know it sounds rough, but that's what's gonna happen. Unless you're, like, a really good fighter. That's it. That's the anime fighting style? Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, what about that testimony? Uh, it was very important, because of the sword. Of course it's important. We've learned the detective's secret technique, after all. Yes, indeed. I'll remember to use it if I ever take a walk alone at night. <laughs> Why the heck is he eyeballing me like that? It's creeping me out. Now then, witness. We'll go ahead and add that secret information to your official testimony. I went back to the wall, but the thief's blow landed upon my third eye. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna present the sword. You're you're freaking You're a big liar you're at me. That's for true. Uh, Detective Atby, your testimony is crumbling like a house of cards. What fun this is, Sir Lawyer. It is truly a pleasure to cross swords with you. And now, once again, you are thrown down the gauntlet at my armored feet. I believe this is what you said yesterday. No, the coward must have wormed his way through somewhere besides the door. Then my arch nemesis struck me in the head from behind with the gruesome item here. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, from behind, huh? But just now you testified that he struck you on the forehead. I hardly think you can forget where he hit, the, he hit you on the head. Uh, it seems I've made another mistake. Detective Adme. That's not, oh, this music, like, again, like, I love when you pin someone down, even just a little bit and this music starts playing. That's not the only strange part of your testimony. Uh, what do you mean by that? For example... The very fact that you hid the calling card from the police itself is strange. It's almost as if you were afraid they were going to help with security. <sighs> Geniuses such as myself always have been uh, have always been misunderstood. How sad. That's that's wrong. Oh, his voice is like really deep. I'm glad that I did a deeper voice. I suppose not as deep as his, but like yeah, that would that struck me there. To err is human. To err is human. To forgive divine. Humans aren't machines. They have souls. Feelings. They live, they die. They love, they hate. And yes, they even make mistakes. Hold, hold on. It, it's not as pretty as that. All the coffee shooting up in the cup is all landing perfectly back in. Really? What is it like then? Always chase a riddle down to the end. That's one of my rules. This guy's character is so, like, again, just like how, like, this, these games, like, within, like, the first few minutes of meeting a character, you can learn so much about, uh, so much about them just from their, um, their, their, not only, like, their, their pixel art and their, their, their sprites and their animations, but, like, the way they speak, like, in the first few minutes, like, the way they act when you talk to them, like, it's just like, and it gets, like, straight away, and then you get to learn more about them as time goes on, but you can get such a good idea of who they are in the first, like, few minutes. Unless they're hiding something really sinister. This is it. This just might be my chance to turn things around. 
Mr. Wright, what exactly is it that you're asserting? Very well, Your Honor. The defense asserts that... This is something that has crossed my mind a little bit, but the reason I didn't, like, say it that often and is because I felt like we didn't have enough evidence to support it in any way, shape, or form. It was just one of those things where it's like, oh, he might have been masked to mask himself. The whole idea of Mr. Adamy is no ace detective, we know this. We know this. Mr. Adamy is a fake. We That's not true. Let's try this. The answer is simple. It's all clear to me now. Detective Luke Adamy's true identity is actually Mask the Mask. Order in the court! Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? There are too many unnatural parts to Miss Adamy's story. He says he was hiding at the crime scenes, which is why no one ever saw him there. And then, in his last case, he manages to outperform Detective Gumshoe and the entire police force to miraculously retrieve the stolen treasure. That's... That's because I analyzed the crime scene data, data and made an exquisitely elegant deduction. I picked up clues that the police overlooked in order to arrive at a... Na 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 na. I love when Phoenix says that. Na 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 na. I'm interrupting you. Oh please, the explanation is far simpler than that, Detective Adamy. The truth is that you are in fact Master Mask. But, Mr. Wright, this photo, it, it clearly shows Master Mask. Wait, so... Hold on a second, if the box is actually where the er the paint was, hold on a second, I just want to no notice this now. Then someone like, then how did, how did, how did the shape get there? Maybe I'm just wrong, maybe I'm wrong about the paint altogether. The security camera belongs to the Lordy Taylor department store. Oh, he shouldn't have been able to manipulate it. He didn't need to manipulate it. He gained access to the warehouse under the pretense of providing security. Then he simply dressed up as a thief and stole the urn. So the ace detective is actually an ace thief. Is this true, witness? <laughs> the mask MO is pure genius, and so am I, Luke Adamy, ace detective. You're very clever to have come to such a conclusion. I'm impressed. Wait, what? Really? What? Witness, you're admitting it? No, he can't. What? No, already? Nick, now's your chance. Yes, time to put the last nail in this guy's coffin. Detective Adamy, when you assume the thieves are- What? What is that frame? What is that? That's very comedic and so good, but that looked like it freaking hurt. Godot Blend 102, my personal favorite. He would be kicked out of court! Like, well, no, actually, you know what? You know what? You know what? We had a whole case last time where this woman was whipping the judge, so I'm sorry. Like, okay, whatever. Coffee being thrown is nothing surprising at all. Uh, Mr. Kano! The ace detective is actually the ace thief. I smell a best-selling novel. There's only one problem. It simply isn't true. But, Mr. Kano, Mr. Wright has made some very strong <laughs> And I will admit my opening uh, has woven a compelling narrative out of the whole cloth, but it is in fact nothing more than a patchwork quilt, Mr. Trite. If this detective really is the thief, then show us the proof of your claim. But it had better be as hot and as perfect as the coffee dripping down your face. Well, Mr. Trite just don't stand there. He threw coffee at me. <laughs> he threw coffee at me. Judge, he threw coffee at me. <laughs> this court would like to see the decisive proof you have quickly. Quickly! Oh, yes, of course. What's the big rush? Are you alright, Nick? Adamy looks pretty rattled right now. I'd like to finish this right now if I can, but I can, can I really do- I don't think we can, I only have enough evidence. The decisive evidence that proves Ms. Luke Adamy is in fact mask to mask, it's yet to be found. We don't have it. We do not have this. And I think that the proof that we'd be able to find, I think the, the most definitive proof that we could find is the, um, is the urn. But we don't have the urn. Like, if you could find out just, but then he, like, then again, he wears gloves, I suppose.
Like, if we could do something with the urn, but that's the, that's the one piece of evidence we don't have that could link him to this case. Proof? Of course I've got nothing. Just what I thought. That gulp. Man has to hold his head up high, no matter how bad things get, after all. Uh, I don't like this music. This, always, like, this is always very scary. I see. I thought perhaps you had some evidence to back up your assertion. This is no good. I've got to stay on the attack. I'll never get another chance to prove that this guy is a thief. Don't give up, Nick. Think harder and try again. It's no good. I'm just not ready. But are you going to just give up and let us lose this? So you've come to you. So you've come to your senses, have you, sir lawyer? I uh, uh I can't think of a counterattack at all. It seems the cloud of suspicion surrounding this witness has lifted. Mr. Godot, if you have anything further to add, then... Who's holding it? Who's holding it? Who? Hello? How are you? Who are you is good to? Who are you? That doesn't really matter now, does it? Miss Leet, what are you doing here? Nicky boy. The thing you've been looking for... I think I found a- It's in his bag?! You mean... That bag? No, not the bag. Uh, wait, they fixed it? That's... The sacred urn! Nick, it's the urn! Look at- look at, like, Desiree's outfit, though. It's freaking insane. So cool. Order, order! You, madam, not urn. Where did you find it? Never believe it. It was in the office of Mr. Fancy Pants Ace Detective. Look at me. She has such a cool smile as well. Oh, Desiree, you're the best! I love he's like cheering on his wife you know, from the sidelines. Yeah, Desiree, you do it. Love you, girl. Sacred urn found in the office of Luke Adamy has pink splotches all over it. So that was the paint that we saw. Well, how do you explain that one, Mr. Adamy? Even if you're going to have a hard time, you're, even you are going to have a hard time whizzing out of this one. <laughs> Pathetic. Mr. Godot, do you have something you wish to say? Yes, Your Honor. It simply amazes me how, so, how quickly times change. In the old days, a man was to be taken at his word. It's truly sad. Oh, shut up. Shut up. In the old days, a man has to be taken at his word. This is a courtroom, buddy. This is a courtroom. How about we take this outside? Me and Desiree versus you and Adamy. I think it'd be a good uh, show. Be quiet about this. You're still denying that Mr. Adamy was involved? Before casting aspirations, Detective Adamy, consider the young lady here. Your name is Desiree. Desiree Delete. Is that correct? Yes. What about it? She just what about it, Godot. How charming. The lengths that a woman is willing to go to save her husband is truly inspiring. It sure is. I mean, like, I hope that most people would do that for a loved one they believe is innocent. What are you insane? Oh, that's the first time we've ever seen her crack like that, like, demeanor she has. As the wife of the criminal, you could have discovered that stolen urn anywhere. Including the office of the good detective here. So you found the urn. What does that prove? It certainly doesn't prove where the urn was before you found it. Uh, what? I, I just brought it here from the detective's office. Please, madame. This town is already filled to the brim with lies. Any more could only compound the tragedy we've been witness to. You're, you're wrong. I, I would never... I would never do such a thing. Yeah, she is cracking, which is something that, like... You know, is very rare to like happen in, in a situation, especially with her as well. I uh, know it's it's extremely rare. Please, Nikki boy, you've got to help me. Talk some sense to these people. There must be some way. I've got to prove that Erm was actually in the Atomy Detective Agency. Guys, we're gonna end this video here on this little bit of a cliffhanger. Um, I don't know, man. Like, I'm just having such a fantastic time with this game. It's been so exciting. I get this exhilarating feeling every time I'm playing it. And I will see you all very, very soon in the next one. Bye-bye.